What's going on guys, John Elder here from Konami.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use comments and clear the screen with Python. Alright, in the last video we created this very simple Hello World program, the very first program that any coder always creates. In this video, I'm going to expand a little bit and show you how to clear the screen programmatically. And I'm also going to talk about comments a little bit. So let's just do the clear the screen thing first. So if you notice, every time we run this thing, and I'm just pressing up on the keyboard, the up arrow key, and it'll type in the last thing that you typed in. So we don't have to type out Python hello.py every time. You know, if you run this a few times, this screen starts to get kind of full, right? And you can clear this by typing clear, or let's see, uh, CLS, no, just clear. So we want to be able to do this programmatically. Now, if you're on a Windows machine, and you're using like the command prompt or PowerShell, the command is CLS to clear the screen, it stands for clear screen. If you're on a Mac, or if you're using this bash terminal that I am, the command is clear. So Let's run this a couple more times. Okay, so it's the screen is full of stuff. How do we clear this programmatically, we want our actual program to do it for us. So we need to do a couple of things, we need to import a module. And we'll talk about modules in a lot greater detail later on. But for right now, just know that a module is like another program that you can pull into your program, or it's another bit of code that you can pull into your program and use in your program. So to do that, we almost always just type in import, and then the name of the module. And this module is OS, it stands for operating system, it's going to allow us to do things on your operating system, like clear the screen, right. So uh, OS comes with Python, so we don't have to actually install this or anything like that. So that's cool. So to use this, we just reference OS. And then we type dot system because we want to make a system call to our operating system. And this is a function, we'll talk about functions later on. But we want to pass in an argument. And the argument we want is if you're on a Windows machine CLS. So let's save this and run it again and see if this will work here. It does not. So that's because we're on a bash terminal. If you're on a command prompt on Windows or the PowerShell, that will clear the screen. If you're on this bash like we are, or if you're on a Linux or a Mac computer, then you want to pass in clear. So if we save this, come back here, and run it again. Boom, you see automatically it clears the screen. Now every time we run this, it will clear the screen for us, right? So that's pretty cool because it keeps our uh, terminal here nice and readable and clean and stuff. So very cool, very easy. And that's all there is to that. Now for the rest of this video, I want to talk about comments. And comments are a fundamental computer programming thing. Every time you write code, you should comment it. And a comment is just what it sounds like it's a comment, it's a little note that you're leaving to yourself, or you're leaving to somebody else who might come later on and deal with your code. If you're on a team, and there's a whole bunch of people working on a program, your comment might be to them, you know, it's just a little bit of code that explain or it's just a little bit of text that explains what your code is supposed to do. So to do a comment in Python, there's a couple of ways. The main way is just to use the number sign hashtag, whatever you want to call that. And then anything you type after it, you notice it's sort of grayed out. So I might type um, for here a comment, I would say, print uh, hello world to the screen. Right now, in the real world, I wouldn't leave a comment here because this is just blindingly obvious what this is. But as you write more and more code, it becomes sort of um, harder and harder to read it. And especially if you come back later. So like, you might write a program and then a year from now have to come in and update it for all kinds of different reasons. Well, a year from now, you're gonna have forgotten what your code does. Sometimes it's obvious, a lot of times it's not. So you write a little comment to remind yourself or like I said, if you're working on a team to help other people understand what your code is doing, if you're doing an open source project, that you're going to release for free to the world, you need your code to be readable, you're going to use a lot of comments so that the people that use your your thing will know what's going on. So you definitely don't have to write a comment above every single line of code. 
it's more like sort of major sections. And from time to time, there'll be a spot where you know you should probably comment because, you know, your code is strange, it looks weird, whatever. So comments work like this with the hashtag. Now, from the hashtag all the way to the end of this line, everything is going to be commented out. And then the, the next line below it, the program starts up again. So if we save this and run it, you'll notice that absolutely nothing has changed. It still just prints hello world up onto the screen. It does not print your comment. It doesn't do anything with the comment. It just ignores it, right? That's what the hashtag does. It says from here to the end of the line, just ignore everything. So you could put your comment like this. You could put your comment on a line of code. Uh, this is another comment. That's perfectly fine too. So you might do that if there's a particular bit of code on a line that um, you, you want to explain, do that here, right? Now, you can't then start writing code again, right? It's, this is all commented out from here all the way to the end of the line. So just sort of keep that in mind. Now, there's lots of different conventions. Um, some people really like to like make their code stand out and be sort of graphical like this or make their comments stand out. Uh, it's a personal preference. I don't do that. I find that kind of overkill. You really just don't need to do that. You might do something like this um, by John Elder. Codemy.com. You might do something like this at the very top of your program to sort of explain what the whole program is doing. Um, I, I've seen that a lot in the past. That's okay, I guess. But uh, really, this is <laughs> this is much overkill. So that's sort of interesting. Now, you can do more than one line of code. So if we want all of this stuff to be commented out, I'm using the single quotation mark. See that? You do it three times. So that sort of opens the comment, and you notice everything below is now commented out. So let's say we want to close this little comment thing. So we, we type three more single quotation marks. And then you notice, well, let's get rid of this. You notice everything below this is back in the world of actual code. So if you have multiple lines of code, the three single quotation marks are good to use. Oops. And then my comment. <laughs> Otherwise, just stick to the one. Now, some reasons why you might use the triple single quote, one of the big ones is a lot of times I'll write a block of code and it works, but I might want to rewrite it and do it more elegantly, more simply, or I might have a better idea. I'll, I'll comment out that whole block of code and then I'll start again. Now, if my new code doesn't work, I'll just delete it and then remove those comments and it works again. So there's all kinds of different reasons to comment your code. Mostly it's best practices. If you want to get a job as a programmer, employers really like to see commented code. Why? Because you're going to quit someday and they're going to have to hire somebody else to come in and maintain your programs and they need to be able to understand your programs to do that. Those, that's what comments are for. So it's just definitely best practices. I will admit that I don't comment my code hardly at all. I work on my own. I've always been sort of self-employed. I run my own company. I'm the programmer. I know what all my code does, so I hardly ever comment it. It's a bad habit. I don't recommend that you do that. I wish that I would gotten in the habit of commenting my code early on when I first started learning how to code. Unfortunately, I was eight years old at the time, and there weren't a whole lot of resources to teach coding, so I just never picked up on the whole commenting thing. So I, I just, to this day, don't comment a lot. And it's something I really should do. But you, just starting out, should always comment your code and uh, just get in the habit of doing it. Like I said, you don't have to do it above every single line of code. But every block of code that does something new, sort of just, you know, take a second to write a line of, of comment explaining what this code is going to do. If you're writing code in that comment and you get to a line that's particularly hard to understand, put a little comment there too. You know, just it's a good idea. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out codemy.com. 
where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. So you pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos with PDF versions of all my best selling coding books. Join over 50,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Konobi.com, and we'll see you in the next video.